Welcome back to another episode on Oak and Rock Fatherhood. I am your co-host, Zachary Small, joined by fellow co-host, Anthony Migliorino. Anthony, what's going on, brother? What's happening, Zach? How we doing? I'm doing very well, man. Today, we have the privilege of having Alec from Fathers Reforged on. Alec is a repeat guest. He's been on the Family Alpha podcast. He's been on multiple live streams, a member of Dad Twitter. He's been on the Dad Twitter spaces, on Future Fathers spaces. The man has been everywhere, and now he's back on here to talk to us. But before we dive into all of that, Alec, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, guys. Always a pleasure, always an honor. Very happy to have you on. Before we dive into picking your brain, could you tell us a little more about who you are, where you're coming from, and what you're doing, and how you found yourself onto this platform that you're on right now? Sure. Um, I am currently based in Wales in the UK. Not a lot of people uh, know that we exist, certainly not across the pond. <laughs> um, but uh, I stumbled across Twitter about six or seven months ago now um, across a number of the dad accounts. Uh, in, in search of, uh, I suppose, meaning for myself and, and radical self-development. And it kind of snowballed from there. I thought I'd add my own voice to the mix, and uh, it's gone pretty well. Um, and I've made some lifelong, life-changing connections uh, in, the, in the fatherhood space that have completely uh, revolutionized me as a person and as a father, and therefore my family. It's pretty succinct. So your family, we're talking marriage, we're talking kid, kids, seven kids, nine kids, two kids. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, I yes, I am happily married and I have two children. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. I like to set the stage with the, the demographics or at least the, the number of kids and the relationship status because a lot of people wonder where are you coming from? You know, I've had people say, <laughs> you know, you, you wouldn't know what I'm dealing with because I'm a father. And I've got to go through this. And obviously, they didn't know anything about my work or in that moment. I'm like, I'm a married man with two kids. Like, I know exactly where you're coming from. You know, but it was a people use their family to justify their their lack of performance. People use their family to justify their their slowing down. Like, I, I don't need to be jacked anymore, dude. I don't need those muscles. I don't kind of focus so much on my, my style. I see my wife every day. I come out of my work clothes, you know, and we hang out. So there's no need for me to be better. And yet here you are a man who not only have found your way onto a group through through the social media platforms like dad twitter you know but you're also building your own thing in that fathers reforged you've got your youtube channel rolling you've got a lot of content longer form content you've been sharing through your threads and they've been hidden and there's something important about that that i don't want to be lost you're still a present father and you're still doing your job while you're building all of this for yourself and your family and so there has to be some balance there. And I was wondering if you could tell me, how are you balancing this newfound sense of purpose and calling to write, to record, to do this video right now, along with being the man who's still there to engage with the kids, still there to keep the relationship fresh with your wife. You brought a lot onto your plate and you didn't take anything off it. So, or maybe you did. I'm wondering, how were you able to do that? There's a, I suppose there's an irony to it. Um, and that is, uh, of course, people fill their lives with all sorts of things, you know, their hobbies, uh, going out drinking with their friends, binge watching the, you know, Netflix, that sort of thing. Um, but the irony to the situation is when I took all of this on, I found myself becoming an even, you know, a, a more present father because the stuff I was deciding, you know, the, the things I was deciding to do with my time were recharging, revitalizing, you know, they ignited the fire within me. They made me, um, you know, they made that passion start burning and it made me all that more energized to then, to then be all the more present with my children rather than just endlessly consuming stuff that we, we always kind of pass off as relaxing, but it's really quite draining and exhausting on our mental and emotional state. And of course, you know, we, we have to be quite strict and stringent with, with uh, timekeeping and uh, a schedule. But overall, as I said, the irony is you find yourself, when you take on the right things, you find yourself m a much more energized and much more present father. You know, it's interesting to me when you, when you say that a lot of people spend a lot of time relaxing with booze, mm -hmm. relaxing with, you know, going out and going to the bar or whatever. 
And not, not only is that a carcinogen, not only is that going to leave you more tired, but you wake up, you're cranky the next day. Same thing. A lot of guys will relax with consuming a lot of junk food. They'll relax mm. with, you know, ordering out or something like that or going out with the boys and, and hopping, you know, the bars, whatever, or they'll spend it playing video games at night, like way into the night. And it's not a knock on each of these individual things, but when it's consumed to the point that it's consumed to, it leaves them worse off than before. Mm-hmm. And so the next day they're playing catch up. They're trying to recover from their relaxation where the relaxation was meant to recharge. And it's funny, as soon as you said that, it made me think of a moment. I had messaged Jackie, this is a, like years ago. It was a photo of Anthony. He had like palm trees in his hair. And, and <laughs> we, were, we were on an event. Dude, we were like in the middle of like the Florida woods. It was, it was flooded out. It was pretty wild. But I had sent a picture. I was like, yo, this dude's crazy. He might be crazier than me. And she's like, you guys are like insane. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know. And she's like, I love it. She's like, it's good for you to find people that are like you. It's good for you to be around people who, who have that mindset. Because she knew for however long I, I didn't have anybody. Mm. And so she's like, oh, like that's, that's really cool. And I came back from that event. And the point of this story, I came back from that event after doing all those things. And I was just like so happy to be home. I was more connected with the kids. I was more connected with her. I was a better man because I went out and surrounded myself with men. And while we did tough things, while we did tiring things, we came back more energized. And, and that, through what you were just saying, you know, with finding the writing and finding your new hobby that builds you up, that's something that is missing in many modern man's lives. Is that, that hobby, that action, that thing they do, which fills them with purpose. And even though it, it might have kept them up till one in the morning writing or recording. I mean, you've literally been up from one to two recording. And then you're like, I can't go to bed. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm fired up. And then you bring that to the family. And so it's interesting to me that we play such a focus on like, stop with the video game, stop with this, stop with that. You know, rarely are we saying, hey, you need to find something that offers this. And, and I don't yeah. know what that name for that thing is. But that is something that I'm looking to bring a little bit more of a message to because you don't want there to be a void. Like you don't want there to be a vacuum. Like, well, get rid of your video games and get rid of... That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you need something that makes you better. You can go play a game of Madden to relax and then jump into doing whatever with the kids. You're writing some hobby that builds you up, spending time with your wife. But you can't play 15 games of Madden and then be pissed off on Saturday and not understand why your life's not getting better. Mm -hmm. You're doing... You're sabotaging yourself, thinking you're fixing yourself. And so it's interesting to see you do that because this is fresh for you. Like, how long have you been really in this? You say it was six months ago? Yeah, July last year. Oh, so that tripped me out because it is January. I was yeah. Like, Wait, 20, 2019, 2020? <laughs> like, got it. So yeah, so six months. I mean, you're, you're really fresh to this. And so the perspective you can offer, I mean, how, what did you have to let go of anything to begin that process of uh, Fathers Reforged, <clears throat> of starting to make videos and kind of speak up a little bit? Yeah, I I guess you do, but it's just sort of the sort of the filler stuff you do from day to day, you know? The stuff you can't quite put your finger on, but somehow the time all goes. And it's not um some of it's not negative stuff, you know, and certainly um I suppose relationships I, I'd had with people, um they kind of some people are, are fallen by the wayside, and that's not through them being um, negative or, or us falling out or anything, but you kind of reprioritize your time and you find the things that don't actually offer you anything except just take up your time. They're not, they're not necessarily bad. You know, there's a, a lot of people that you could talk to that are ju- you're just talking to, to, to fill time basically. And so, and some of those people in my life have sort of fallen by the wayside because I, you know, you you reprioritize and you think to yourself, well, I could be spending this time doing something that really gets me fired up or being really intentional with my kids or with my wife or with, uh, you know, with something that's genuinely productive. Or I could just be mindlessly chatting with one of the guys from work for no real reason. And then what you also find is that the people who do matter in your life and the people you do genuinely care of, even though sometimes you may have less time for them, you have much more quality time with them because you're so much more intentional when you do rather than just, you know, sitting in bed, you know, sitting on the couch with the wife for three to four hours doing very little. That's not intentional time with my wife. Whereas, you know, I could be doing this and then go spend only an hour with my wife, but we could be, you know, far more, 
conversational, far more, you know, connected. And it, your life just kind of, you, you gain a different perspective. So you, you sort of reprioritize without knowing you're reprioritizing. So I got a question for you, Alec. Go for it. Um, what Zach was describing, right? These men that are lost, these men that are wasting time. Was was this who you were prior to the six months before coming on dad Twitter? Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. It that was. was me. Okay. Yeah. That was so, me wasting my time. <laughs> junk food. Um, no right. alcohol. I've never been a drinker. But um, junk food, uh, video games. You know, yeah, Netflix, I don't know if it was phone. theoretical if we were talking oh, about no, somebody no. else. I've I've lived this, you know. I've I've lived this. I've come out the other side. So, thanks to, you know, dad Twitter and guys like you. Yeah, well that's what I was gonna ask you. So it, to me it's interesting, right? Because I I talk a lot about parenting and figuring out how to get my um, kids or children from being stuck in certain spots. And I always try to come from obviously a place of peaceful parenting, gentle parenting, but right? I, I don't want to force good into them, right? I want them to be good on their own. So was there anything in particular that made you change, right? Was there something that happened? Was it just over time you had enough, you couldn't take it? Or was it, was there any aha moment, right? Like a light bulb went off and you were like, man, I got to change my life. I got something that has to happen. Or did somebody reach out to you, right? Or did you find somebody to speak to? Right. How did this, how'd you go about this progression? Yeah. Um, it kind of, it was a slower process for me. There was kind of smaller aha moments dotted throughout the last couple of years. One was when I had an emergency appendectomy and the surgery went wrong <laughs> and I was, uh, I was, what, I should have been <laughs> <laughs> weak organs. You got to cut them out. Um, but what was supposed to be in and out the same day, I ended up then in hospital for the next five days, fighting fevers and low oxygen and, you know, well, I almost died. So that was a big wake up for me. And then sort of, I suppose. Was that, was that one, because of your health or was that just a uh, medical I mean, malpractice? A uh, bit of both, but but mainly medical malpractice. I mean, the surgery went wrong because of the mal. Yeah. <laughs> the surgery went wrong because of med medical malpractice, but I guess my recovery was um, longer than it could have been because I was unhealthy. Yeah. But the fact, uh, I mean, the fact that I almost died from it was probably just the fact that it was botched. <laughs> but the fact that I took so long to recover afterwards um, was... So was just going life. through that made you... Yeah, that was a, that was one of the... A little bit of a wake-up call? Yeah, yeah. But I still wasn't quite there, you know? I I mean, we, we just talked about, you know, going out with a bunch of uh, like-minded men and, and reinv reinvigorating yourself. I never had anything like that with other men. I couldn't find any other men like that. You know, work, school, friends, family, nothing like that. Res no other men resonated with me. So I kind of I poured myself into my nine to five, made it my nine to five plus evenings in an attempt to, um, to, to generate more money, you know, that sort of drive to not sit on my thumbs anymore and get on with it. That didn't get me anywhere. I mean, I gained new skills, which allowed me to get a new job, but it didn't get any, me anywhere within my current job. And that was, again, that kind of hit another minor aha moment for me. And then Throughout that process, I was going crazy on LinkedIn trying to make connections and whatnot. And I found some guy preaching about um, COVID and, and talking about the, the lockdowns and government overreach and the reduction of freedoms that really resonated with me. And uh, he had a Twitter account. So I followed, I jumped on tw uh, his Twitter page. I didn't have a Twitter account at the time, but then I started uh, started you know, periodically checking his Twitter page without an account. And then I found other dads and other men and other fathers he was sharing and the kind of bled out from there. And that was a big aha moment that there were actually other fathers out there that shared a lot of the same views as me, but also views that I kind of neglected within myself, sort of physical health, that sort of thing, uh, uh, financial freedom, things that I'd neglected or never even known. And that was kind of a wake up. And that was the last aha moment for me then when I found all these other dads out there, you know, uh, 
screaming about how you should be fit, you know, how you should be strong, how that is your duty as a father to not neglect your health, how it is your duty to provide as much financial freedom or work towards financial freedom as you can for your family. And uh, well, to be to be clear, they that weren't was the last screaming. aha moment for me. And then I jumped they on. Were, they were calmly asserting no. their, their but, speaking voice. Cal yeah, calmly asserting. No, and, and no, I think it, that's awesome, uh, right? It's, you, you realize that you're not alone, right? There comes a point, right? Because I, yeah. you, you, I don't know if you went through this, but there was a point in my life where I felt like I was crazy, right? That I lived in an insane world and nobody understood me. Nobody got me. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just the reason I asked it, because this dude saying wearing leaves in our heads, right? The, the, <laughs> yeah. What, this, was, <laughs> th this was the first time I was in a group with Zach. And, uh, and again, like thinking that you're alone, thinking that nobody gets you, that nobody understands the way you think or and, and once you find that, you have this freedom to to express it even more. Right. It, yeah. It's almost like the barrier gets the, the wall gets broken down and and you start to want to become and I don't want to say become who you are, but you want to show it more. Right. You, you become yeah. proud of it. And you're like, man, I didn't know that that. Like I knew pieces of me were fighting for good against evil, but until I heard other men openly talk about it, I was like, yes, it's true. And then, you know, from there, and, and the re a, a big reason I bring it up is if we go to parenting and what you described you went through and what I just described I went through, if we can give that freedom to our kids, right? Let them know that if they just be themselves, if they can just express who they are, Right. They can fast track this process. They don't have to waste 10, 20 yeah. years being silenced and pushed down and thinking that they're weird or there's something wrong with them. So that's why, you know, I tell parents, I tell fathers, give your kid freedom, let them be defiant. And they're like, oh, you're crazy. They're going to burn the house down. They're going to talk back. And yeah, so what? What are you worried about? You're a grown man. You're worried about a three year old talking back to you. Come on, grow, you know, grow some balls. Let's. Yeah. Let's worry about real things. <laughs> no, it, you know, exactly. in that, it, th I think there's an important element to this that we need to hit, and that's you. You came to the arena. You started fixing you. Like as you said, you know, there weren't any men like that around me. Well, you were out of shape at that time. You were you were focused on the wrong things at that time. So how would you even know if the men were there? Because they they wouldn't have gone to you. You were in exactly. your level. So the possibility oh, no, is I, that the men existed, but you just weren't at, ready to, you saw, yeah. maybe if you saw them, you're like, no, like I'm not one of those guys. Those guys are crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I take, and that, and I've said this before a number of times, you know, I take personal responsibility. I can say that there weren't many men, you know, there weren't men around me that I knew. And that's based on the guys in work, my, the guys in my family, you know. Um, but I also didn't make the effort to find those guys. You know, it works both ways. I think that's a great example for the kids as well. Is, you know, like, oh, I don't have any friends. Well, you need to go find them. You don't need to prove yourself to them. They they will like you for you or they won't. But you need to be in a, a situation or a position where they could at least find you. They can see you. Mm -hmm. And you start that by being the bigger man. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Zach and blah. Or, hey, I like what you said here. I would like to try that. Or the, the very base question, hey, how did you do that? You know, because there are guys who haven't even started the process of improving, but if mentally they know they're ready or something's not right or they have nothing to lose, which is the best and worst spot to be, the worst because they're in a lot of pain, the best because they're willing to give it all because they've, they're they're at the end of their rope, and so they do go all in. But they say, "Hey, I don't even know how to begin. I'm fat. I'm unmotivated. I'm not having sex. I'm not happy. I, I hate my job, but I see what you have and I want that. So how do I start?" And I've got a lot of messages like that. I always like, "Hey, cool. Thanks for reaching out, man." This is that was the start. That was the first step. You already did it. Yeah. The next the next ones are easier. And you did that. And that's interesting to me. Yeah, Thank and you. you're only six months in, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You you're still fresh, man. You're still green. <laughs> it's been a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's it's great to see. You know, it, it's we we live in an age where you have endless possibilities at your fingertips, right? You can you can change your path, your stars, whatever, however you want to phrase it, right? In within six months, right? How how much different is your life now from when you started this journey, right? How is your relationship better with your wife and with your kids? 
Um, and I'm, I'm asking that as like an uh, open question, right? How, how have you seen things uh, transform in just six months? Oh, drastically. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a pretty good answer. Am... Like that, that lack <laughs> yeah. of an answer. I was like, shit, like, I, I don't yeah. know if his mic's working. I was like, no, oh, he heard that. That's just a, a, a full, like looking at the big picture of all the things that have changed. Yeah. Your brain had to go through all the files. That was funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but, you know, it, it's changed drastically and, and very rapidly. Um, you know, my my wife and I are a lot happier. Uh, not that we were particularly unhappy before. You know, we had a good marriage, but we're better now. You know, that that's, I think a lot of people settle for good or okay when everything can be better. Um, you know, I am closer with my kids. My kids have a lot more... I don't want to say respect, but maybe admiration. They can see the things I'm doing. You know, we talk about me going to the gym. They've seen the weight I've lost. You know, they know that I'm on here tonight. They know that I've been on on Oak and Rock Fatherhood before. You know, they love the fact that I'm on YouTube. You know, there's that sort of, there's that energy in the house now because I have that energy and that energy pours out of me into the family. Well, I, I can tell you from experience, the, the admiration stays but you being cool, that fades away as they get older. Hundred percent. It's never gonna fade. Gonna be cool. <laughs> That's good, man. You know, a lot of what we see at the micro level is a, a from the top down version of what is happening in global politics in homes that are not raised or are intentional with what it is they allow into their home. Mm. We have a lot of dads who are on the other end of this. They are overweight. They're stuck in their job, but they think they're doing well because the, the focus is on all these exterior things. They don't even look at themselves at, at their relationship with their wife. They'll say, oh, this is just how it's supposed to be. This is the way it is. Happy wife, happy life. You know you, you know it. And we, we beat it that horse enough that honestly, we pulverize the bones. There, there's no reason for us to go down that path any longer. We've said it. it. It's ridiculous. But men still live it. And yet, there's a group of men who are looking at what's going on in the world and they're using this as a reason to turn it around in their home. It's almost like when you drink too much of a certain liquor and then you smell it, you're like, oof, like, nah, I can't have that. Like, give me something else. You, you get so much of the drama, so much of the amplified fear and just every single day that people are like, nah, I'm, I'm good with this, man. Like, turn it off. And it, it's almost like the machine designed to keep you in perpetual fear and control eats itself a little because too mm. much of it. And some people are like you, they're desensitized. Like I'm not afraid anymore. And I'm annoyed. Like now you pissed me off and I'm going to thrive in spite of you. And it, it, it's really interesting what technology has allowed us to do. I'm now going to talk to a man from Wales about what's happening in your home community and country. And I, I'm an American, you know, Anthony and I were in the Carolinas of America, a lot of our audience, American, but we also have a large yeah. percentage of dads Twitter, a large percentage of uh, several men in the FOE. There are a lot of people on an international level. This is an international event that's happening. Everybody's country has gone weird. Everybody, homes have changed uh, pre-COVID, post-COVID. It's almost like the 9-11 uh, for us situation. Travel never went to what it was. The airports still are not what they used to be. You used to walk up to the gate and I, like, there we will never go back. And there's a part of COVID that we will never return from. Like, mm -hmm. It's changed forever. And so I'm wondering how a man in Wales is navigating a world where your government, I, I've seen it across the European side of the house as well, is making these moves of we're doing this, we're not doing this. You have to be here. You can't be here. We're allowing this. We're not allowing that. Fear control, fear control. Do what we say. You'll be fine. And yet you, this has been going on two years, a year and a half into this, said, nah. I'm going to change things. I'm going to be my best. I'm going to do what I need to do for my family. And you guys homeschool. So how are you? We do. And how are these other families in this homeschooled community? I don't want to say keeping yourself in the bubble because that makes it sound almost as if negative. You're, you're oblivious to it. Mm. How are you not allowing it to impact you? And how are you keeping the walls up to keep the bullshit outside the kingdom where you, the community that you're working with, your family, obviously, and children, but also those extended that work with you? You're all staying sane. You're focusing on what matters. You're leaning into your families. How are you doing that? How are you dealing with this? Because that might be exactly what some men need to hear right now because they haven't found a way to do that. Yeah. So um, I think 
a big boon for us is that we do homeschool. Okay. So our kids aren't exposed to any of the messaging in public school. You know, they aren't exposed to anything, any talk about masks, any talk about vaccines, anything like that at all. Um, in fact, my children, uh, I can confidently say, know very little about what's actually gone on <laughs> in terms of COVID since it began. You know, I th the, the most they can tell thing? you is, I do. And well, um, it's like the, it's because... like the boogeyman. If you don't talk about him, it doesn't exist. Hmm. But yeah, we are in a world and where it does exist. I don't want. <laughs> We are, you know, so I, but... I guess my question is, if if your kids are are oblivious, because I do, I agree with homeschooling. We did homeschool, but we're we're now public school off our kids' choice. Homeschooling is awesome, but when I hear people yeah. say that your kids can't go to public school, to me that reads as your kids can't survive the onslaught of information. It's going to get into their head. It's going to ruin them. It's going to twist them up, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I disagree with that big time. I think what happens in the home is more important, and it will yeah. offset it. So I, yep. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm, I'm glad. I don't want any kid watching the freaking news. But I'm wondering yeah. if your kids are aware or at least to the right degree. I mean, they're so young, dude, that it, it doesn't really apply yeah. to this situation. So I guess I'll back off on that one. At, at eight no, and five, I, at, at eight no. and five, they, they don't really need to know shit. <laughs> no, exactly. And, and that's that's the that's the premise. You know, they're still very young children um, and they should just enjoy their livelihood at the moment. They should live as free as they can. And um, part of part of the that the plus to that is that we're helping them develop uh, as children and, and as people the right mindset to be able to be able to cope properly with information like that and to be able to cope properly with the world um, when uh, you know as and when the world confronts them as they're growing up. Uh, but in terms of uh, the wider homeschool community, I mean, generally we're. Um, uh, we're largely on the same page because I think when you do homeschool, there generally comes sort of a lack of trust in the government anyway. That's sort of the baseline <laughs> for most homeschoolers. <laughs> <laughs> There's already that preset foundation. And so... Um, that sounds a uh, little unpatriotic, Alec. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're lucky in that, in that sense. We are quite lucky. And, and are, they can be a lot more open-minded. Um, and uh, my wife runs the local uh, homeschool group. And so she puts on uh, events and, and classes and, and crafts for the local the local and, and wider home education community. Um, so but because she's in charge of that, she's, be, she's able to control what goes on there. You know, she's not saying everyone's got to wear a mask and everyone's got to, you know, everyone's got to be vaccinated or everyone's got to sign in and do this and do that. So she's, we, we're, have that level of control as well over everything. Um, but I think the, it's uh, such an important thing to realize as a man and as a father, you know, is that the 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 school and, you know, by then, by extension, the government doesn't own your kids. You are in control of what goes on in your home. And your kids and your wife will look to you as to how you handle it. And that's why your kids can go to public school and you can work in nine to five and everyone can do that, but you can still be in control of what goes in your home. I'm not saying you have to homeschool and that's the only way to keep your children safe. No, the vast, you know, the vast majority of the responsibility lies on the parents and you can control what comes into your house and how, if you're not scared, if you're digesting the information first, then you can relay that in an age appropriate, calm, um, fearless manner you know it and look we're two years in and life is still going on and i know everyone touts that you know fear is abound but we're still here we're still you know um it's totally within your control you lead the house the house the mood in the house will follow whatever mood you set and that's it and you can think the world's going to shit outside your doors but if you are calm and collected in your house then your family will be calm and collected. And it's as simple as that. Do you, <clears throat> Alec, do you get a lot of pushback from other parents or fathers um, because your kids are homeschooled, right? Do they think that they're they're not going to learn the same? They're, they're not going to get as good of an education, right? For, for some reason, people think that we need the government to educate our kids. Mm -hmm. And even... <clears throat> 
even if it goes against all the evidence, right? Even if it goes against everything that we can logically understand about education, they'll still say that we need this, the government schools, right? We need your your ki- your kids need to be raised within these institutions that have been following the the Prussian army model for the last hundred and fifty years, right? You have to sit in rows. You have to raise your hand if you have to go to the bathroom or if you have a question. You can't disrupt the teacher. It's it's almost like a prison. And we think that this yep. is the best way that these kids will learn. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of <laughs> it's like really anything, right? It's it's like the government says we're going to make alcohol illegal, and what happens? We get prohibition. We get we get the mafia pretty much created. We get pro- alcohol cartels, and we we say um, if you if you smoke weed in this country, we're going to throw you in prison. Now I think we have the most people in prisons, even more than uh, under Stalin, under the Russian gulags, right? We have so many people following these rules of the of the system and it's detrimental to our health it's detrimental to our existence and yet we don't see it right and then we a lot of parents bring it into their house and they are the the dictators in their home and it, yeah. it's the same conditioning that i see um you know we, we see that the government hold this power over us and even if the evidence shows the exact opposite of what they tell us right whether it's with mandates masks uh, prison, right? Prisons made to rehabilitate you. For some reason, we still believe that. Um, we see the evidence, and it's clearly the exact opposite. But we still follow along, right? We still go along um, willingly, too, for the most part, right? Very rarely, very rarely do people have to come to your house with guns and force you to obey the government. Yeah. We just have this fear of, hey, we better do it, or or they will come. Um, and my point is, we we raise our kids this way. Right. We, we deny them freedom because there are these rules that were set before us, right, from our parents, from our parents' parents. And even though shit is still fucked up, even though kids are still fucked up, there's addiction, there's criminality, there's promiscuity, right? And, and we make up all these excuses why we fail to see the, the immoral authority hovering over everything. And, and I bring it up because... <laughs> Do you think homeschooling is gonna cut the, the the puppet strings from our from from ourselves to allowing our children to be more free to like embrace freedom once again? Do you think yeah. that's one of the the ways? I do. I think that's. I think it's definitely a sort of a multifaceted approach. But I think homeschooling is a good start, and it's definitely one of the bigger arms. We and in fact, over COVID, now the the homeschooling population has boomed you know, um, in the UK and the States, because people just, a lot of people do have realized what you've just said over COVID. A lot of people have dug their heels in further, but a lot of people have realized. Um, and I think it's generally the start, because like I said, I, I when you do homeschool, you you have that sort of preset foundation of government distrust anyway. <laughs> so it, it's easy to build off of that. Um, I think a lot of the... I think a lot of the problem, I, I suppose, is like you said, is, is living in that fear, and people people are presented with this information, but it doesn't matter because a cognitive dissonance kicks in because they're scared, um, because uh, you know it does lead to, uh, in, in most cases, some form of social ostracization. You know, um, my fa- uh, yeah, my but daughter- is it healthy socialization? Oh, no. Right? Is, is it a healthy? Oh. Right. Th- think about the kids who are your your son and no. daughter is in your home, right? They, uh, social. They, Sorry, they, I said social are... ostracization, ostracization, not socialization, because I don't think that schools are the best place for socialization. Because that's a gotcha. big argument. They that's a big misinformed argument they throw at the homeschool community, you know. Yeah. And I, it's completely every time someone opens their mouth and says socialization about homeschool, I know they have no idea what they're talking about, and it's not even worth arguing with them. <laughs> you know, right, I was just going to argue about it with you, so it's good. It's not worth it. Oh, no. I'm glad I'm <laughs> no. glad you got in there. So we both have backed off. So, Alec, you have great frame. You've had both Anthony and I back off on the argument we were going to make in this one episode. <laughs> you know, but I do – it does bring to mind – you said that these parents, you know, they're not they're not informed when they, they go to that trite argument. It's just the su- surface level. That's all we've all heard. You know, that's what they fall to because they don't know anything else. But I do have to wonder, they don't care to know anything else. And I'm wondering if the parents who are saying, well, oh, the socialization, they're not going to have any friends. 
these are the parents who don't want to be home with their kids anyway. They, they have no intention of bringing those kids to a community. They don't want to bring those kids to any sports, sporting events. They don't want to bring their kids to any community events. They don't want anything to do with their kids. It's the government's job to raise those kids. They yeah. want their either either free time while they're at home when the kids are in school or they want their, their relaxation time after they come back from work. Yeah, and you see that all the time because all you have to do is wait till the kids are off school um, for the summer or for Christmas and then a couple of days or a couple of weeks before they go back. You can see the parents posting all over social media, oh, I can't wait for the kids to go back. Uh all these memes about being a terrible parent and how the school is going to parent them much better than that I could for the two weeks they were off. Um, and you think can about that. People making jokes about it. Yeah, yeah, I know. People make jokes no, think about, about it. If you kind were of on Facebook. ease their guilt and their burden. Think about yeah. if you oh, were on Facebook. I'd be slated. And your, and your wife, <laughs> and your wife <laughs> posted. No, and your wife posted. Oh, thank God the weekend's yeah. over. My husband goes back to work. Right? We would be like, listen, we, we have to talk. Hey. Some You're not coming do. on the show again. You got to fix some that people shit. do, <laughs> dude. I couldn't do it, but that's the thing. There, there is a division going on here. There's the people that can relate. There are the people that do think that's funny, and the people that do know how to use a pop filter without it jacking their mic up. But figure that out. You know, there are the people who, when you go through and, and your social media scroll, those those little comments, they eat it up because that keeps them away from the fact that hey, there's a problem here. Yeah, gives like them hey, permission. you're. you're yeah, because, hey, the cha- the group, the, the mob, if you will, they support it. You're in line with them. People like the you aren't mind. in line with them at all. <laughs> but so I'm wondering, how you're living the opposite. We'll just call it the opposite in the slingshot of you are connected with your home. You're doing things in the home. That comes with its own set of problems. One of the problems that, that came out, and actually Jackie and I had to navigate, was she was always with the kids. And then I, I was out always writing whatever they're doing in school. And I would come in. And then we, we always before we would have we could watch a show together, we'd play a game together, we'd do something together. And I didn't realize for one, two, three weeks, she had the kids from the moment she woke up until we went to bed. And there was never time for her to go. And I was like, oh, because it was a new routine. So I was wondering for you, how do you make sure that you don't fall into that trap where your wife is always teacher and, and on mode? Do, do you swap with the teaching of the lessons? Does she get certain time where she goes out and kind of does her thing with her her female friends or you two make date night or how do you ensure that you guys also yeah. don't lose yourselves to no longer dating, but also your only mom and dad? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a balance you need to strike when you first start because of that sort of shift. Like you said, you can't fall into the trap of always being teacher, always being mom and dad. Um, but it's a lot. It's a lot of those little things, like you said, it is making sure we have dates. Um, it is being, uh, and you know, part of it is being intentional, you know, um, sometimes, uh, you know, a little date for us will be leaving the kids with a, a relative so we can go do the food shop, but, you know, we're together for a couple of hours and it's not, oh, it's such a chore going to do, go food shopping, but we enjoy each other's company while we're there. We make, you know, we intentionally spend the time together. We're not scrolling through our phone as we walk up and down the aisles or, you know, just mindless drones. Um, so being intentional is one. Uh, you know, date nights is another. Um, I do take over some uh, some of the responsibility where I can because I do work. Um, you know, I do have the nine to five and everything. Uh, but I'm the also I'm also the one who takes the kids to their their extracurricular stuff. So my daughter plays guitar. Um, my nice. my son does soccer, and my daughter also does judo. So I'm the one who and I go on my own with the kids. It's one on one time for me as well. And it kind of gives her breaks up that sort of that sort of day for her. And I'm the guy, I'm the one who puts the kids to bed every night. And part of that, that was before we were even homeschooling, before they were old enough, you know, to be taught. It was just sort of uh, a space for me, my time after I've been at work to reconnect with the kids and sort of take over then from my wife who's been with them all day. And it's extra important now because she is teaching them all day. And it gives me a chance to um, to sort of give her that space. Or sometimes, I've said it before, I'll just, after work, I'll be like, oh, kids, let's go for a walk, you know? Let's leave mom in the house. She's she's tired, you know? She's had a bit of a, uh, a rough day with you guys, being, you know, and trying to teach you stuff. So let's just go out for a walk. Let's burn off some energy. I get to spend time with the kids. My wife gets to rest. It's just about being intentional and, uh, you know, and realizing how hard she does work to to educate two kids at two different levels. So you're saying you enjoy time with your kids. 
I just want to put yes. that on the record. All <laughs> yeah. right, please. Somebody write, Anthony, write that down. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> you heard it here. Insane. And I'm sure they enjoy time with you, Alec. Well, they have to, so. <laughs> so were you, were you complaining about my connection before? No. Zach? No. Nope. I, know, I, th- I thought you threatened to kick me off. I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> no, I was going to threaten to kick Alec off if he. If, I don't remember oh, what you're talking okay, about. Good. Something about being a part of the the the, the main group. I was yeah. like, no, be- no. It's when he said his wife didn't like him or something. I was like, you got to go, man. <laughs> no, I'm just worried about my connection. I don't care if you kick me off. I'm just worried about the connection. No, you're crystal clear, um, brother. I think. <laughs> I think um, you know when I hear Alec talk about his kids in homeschool. Right, these ideas come into my mind of how dysfunctional society is. Right, we t- we were just talking about the obviously the over control of government that I like to bring up on every episode. It's my favorite pastime. <laughs> it's a thing. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Taxation is theft. It's um, a shit sentiment. If, <laughs> if you think, <laughs> if you think about right, homeschooling kids, putting them in an environment, right, and especially what you just talked about um, with parents actually enjoying the time with their kids, right? Think about all the lessons that'll learn, the, the character that you're building, right? We're, we're teaching kids how to be kind, how to be empathetic, how to be polite, also how to be strong, right? How to, how to do hard things, um, how to cooperate, how to have teamwork. And now you think about a kid who goes to a public school, which most of us have been brought up in, most of us were educated in or uneducated. Myself and included? From the moment you start, right, you're you're yelled at. You're told to to shut up, to sit down. You're told to do assignments, and if you don't, you get detention. If you don't listen, you need a pass to go in the hole. It's it's all this insanity if you really think about it. But then we see the product of what's created from this system. These kids are dysfunctional. They're obese, right? And I don't know how it is in Wales. I know there's like 30 people there, but yep. in the United States. <laughs> There's a real problem with obesity, especially childhood obesity, right? There's a problem with addiction. There's there's all these things that we see coming from how kids are being raised and they just want more of it, right? It, it's like the uh, Stockholm syndrome that mm-hmm. you, you praise your abuser. And I, I think what you're doing is great. And that's why, again, I'm bringing this up is I, I think if, if um, I, you know, I, I wish I would have homeschooled my kids. I didn't. My son wanted to go to, he's in high school now. He wanted to go to make friends because we moved. Um, but but I see this really evolving. And it it's from a mindset of not just because you're homeschooling, but the environment of where your kids are actually being raised in, right? Who cares if they're ostracized by the public school kids, really? Yeah. Right? I don't, I, do you even want them around those kids? Right? They're, I mean, literally, they're doing heroin at 10 years old um, in, in some very lovely liberal cities in this country of ours. <laughs> but, you know, so it just, it, it, I don't mean to go on a rant, man, but it, it makes me angry to, to see what's going on and to see that you're a man, you're a father taking these small steps and it's really going to have an impact in the future, right? The, the, the people, the, the kids that you raise are going to grow up to be really good people, right? Not good citizens, good people. Yeah. Man. And um, it's not noted enough. Thank you. And and that's why we do it. You know, it is, it, it is hard work uh, and parenting is, you know, and it should be. <laughs> um, but that, that's a big, and that is one of the big things for us. We don't, you know, we don't homeschool purely because we think the education they receive at public school isn't, you know, could be better. We, we homeschool for a great many number of reasons. And one of the big reasons is what you just said, you know, is, removal of that influence is the fact that our kids will be raised, uh, you know, they'll be in the home with us. The education they will receive will be in this type of environment where they can learn, they can thrive, and they have that positive uh, relationship with learning. That's one of the big things, you know. Um, I, I didn't have that. I, I, I'm much better now, but it took me a while to find it. And like we talked about earlier, I'm, we're trying our best to equip our sk- uh, kids with the skills and the mindset so they never they're not playing catch up like i am they lived it from day one you know and I th- it's you know homeschooling for us is multi-layered it's not just because we thought they could receive a better education 
you know, a better academic education. There are many reasons. Well, you're embodying your values, you know, and, yeah. and that's kind of my new quip. I don't know if that's alliteration, but you're embodying it, not espousing it. You know, you're not just talking, acting on verba. I try to say the same thing in just many different ways for it to click with people. Because like, it's <laughs> just like, come on, people, like, just get it. Like, just get it. I, I like, that's all I need you to do, you know, but hey, you know, your ears, like, just so you know, you don't have tinnitus. If your ears are always ringing. Anthony and I are frequently talking about like what you're doing, where you're going with your things. We really dig your message. And that goes to your lady too, the extension to her, because you're teaching the value of human connection. You're teaching the value of humanity. You're teaching the value that you, your children are people. They're not just numbers to be pushed through a system. I was pushed through a system. Zach, you have to get this thing in this test to, to move on. Zach, you have to do this to go here. I don't care about you, Zach. I don't care what's happening in your home. I don't care what you're feeling. I don't care what you're thinking. I don't care how you're growing as a person. Do this on this test. In fact, if you keep sucking, I want to give you a few answers to help you just get through my class. I was a really shitty student. I didn't learn shit. And half my teachers just pushed me through. <laughs> they just didn't want to deal with me for another year. I was a good person, just shitty student. But I say that to say this. When we see what's happening at the level that things are happening. So let's say the, the adults across the globe right now. We see yeah. riots. How many people who are rioting during these things are, were homeschooled, do you think? Like... I wish we could get that statistic. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That'd be interesting. I oh, something. Dude, man. <laughs> Anthony knows this, but I hate the kids these days phrase. I, I have always hated it. I do not understand it because my logical brain, I wasn't even homeschooled, but I learned how to value human connection and human beings. I was like, how are we looking at the, the kids these days are kids? <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. look at the adults raising yeah. them. And so Parents you see these all days. these. <laughs> It's the adults these days. You see the shoplifting. Those who are shoplifting, the, the parents right now, the adults right now shoplifting, would be the people who would say the kids these days don't have respect. They're robbing these stores. And then you have to wonder, well, what world were they brought up in? So let's go back, what, 20 years? You know, when they're, that, let's say they're around their mid 30s. Let's go back 25 years to when they're roughly 10. They're, they're formative, they're learning their way in the world. Do as I say, because I said so. Mm -hmm. sit down, shut up, color, do what you're told, follow the rules. If you don't do this, I will hurt you. You must listen to me. I'll reward you. If you comply, I reward you get your, your little biscuit or whatever the hell you want. You know, I don't know what you guys have in Wales. Biscuits sound good. <laughs> <laughs> these, these kids though, <laughs> learned that behavior, which is still promoted. And these are the adults who are now robbing things, saying the kids need to be hit more. That's the problem with them. They, they lack discipline, you know, and that's just not the way it is. That's not how yeah. it works. When I look yeah. at this, you know, it's, it is inconceivable to me to have a, an adult who's living a shitty life tell me what kids these days should be doing. You're the product of what you're espousing. I don't want my kids like you. I don't want my kids running through and stealing from these stores. I don't want them in these riots. I don't want them doing this stupid shit or trying to hold other people down. I don't want them yelling about masks when they know it's not going to bother them or saying that you should inject this with your body because that makes me feel good. These adults are the ones who listen blindly. That's how they were raised. And so what you're doing, it's not just the message of homeschool. It's not just the message of, you know, like, like you were saying, the academics being superior because you're teaching things that the public school system isn't teaching because it doesn't really apply to the drone world they're trying to put them into. It's you teaching them how to be a good human, how to yeah. learn, how to exist on that front. And so you're doing far more than the literal aspect of what you're doing, if that makes sense. You're, yeah. you're teaching the intangibles on a level that your kids will do the right thing when no one's looking. And not every time, dude. They're going to slip like all the kids. What yeah. I'm saying is they're not going to be the kids out there saying, hey, let's go rob this store because they're not going to arrest us. Hey, let's inject ourselves with these things because I don't want to make somebody mad. It goes against my beliefs, but let me do it because I don't want them to be mad, just like I didn't want dad to be mad. Mm -hmm. So just really well done with you and your parents. And that is my my tack in the column of homeschooling. That's the one thing where I, if I could say, hey, we want to homeschool, Jack and I are ready. They're like, yep, let's go back to that. It's totally cool. Yeah. But for, I mean, they're having a good time. School's working for them. And it's not in defense of public or, or private. It's it's what happens in the home that matters. Yeah, well, exactly. My you've kids set, are free to tell me. I've, you've set the standards. I want to be here. Yes. You know, you've already equipped them with a the mindset and the skills that they, you know, to. Uh, so they can stand their own, you know, they can stand their ground. They can stand on their own two feet. They can think for themselves. They can feel for themselves. Yeah, and that's not coming from public education. That's no. coming from parents who are involved in their children's <laughs> yeah. lives and listening to them. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to get, I'm going to get drone strike tonight. Dude, I'm waiting. It's every time we have Alec on. It was the last, uh, the live stream we did with him too. I was like, dude, we're going to get banned. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> they're just going to drop the hammer on us. No, but if, it's really insane to me. And I don't want to keep getting into this, but what you were saying, Zach, right? The, the kids, there, there's such short-term memory that goes on. Dads I speak to, they somehow think that the kids are hit less now. They're less controlled, right? They, that they somehow were too easy on them. And that might be the other side of it, right? There's a lot of neglect going on. Neglect is not the same as giving your kids freedom. Neglect is abuse also. And I, I think, you know, we, we keep seeing or hearing the same arguments, right? We need to be tougher on the kids. We need to be tougher on them. We need to be tougher. We need to be more strict. We need to enforce the rules. The reason why your kid doesn't listen is because you're not strict enough. And we keep going down this path. We keep going down this road. And I think what's happening, what we're starting to see, right, with Dad Twitter, with Oak and Rock, with everything that we're doing, with, with Alex doing, um, the message is starting to resonate more. It's starting to become more clear, right? It, it's There's no more – you can't have illogical inconsistencies, uh, logical inconsistencies about what's going on, right? You're going to be called to the table. You, you can't just spout this nonsense – and stamp your feet like a child and think that it's going to be received as something, oh, yeah, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. No, man, you have to have skin in the game. You have to be credible. You have to know what you're talking about. And I think we see that, right, with the fathers that are what we speak to now. It's a different game. There's a different mindset involved, yeah. right? And it's – obviously, it's cool to see, right? It's it's cool to see it evolve and grow. But – um you know, that's the stance I come from. And I, as much as we see the chaos, the craziness, the dysfunction, the degeneracy going on in the world, I see a completely other side, right? I see all these fathers standing up yeah. and speaking out, saying, hey, don't hit your kids. Why are you punishing them? There's better ways to raise our kids. All you're doing is setting them up for a, a future that is going to be filled with pain and failure. And the more, the more we do this, the, the better off our country is going to be, your country, our towns, our communities, right? These are how things take shape. And um, just, you know, going back to what Zach said earlier about the homeschooling, um, your kids really, to a degree, they need to know what goes on. Mm -hmm. But if the home is the center of that attention and that focus, there's going to be a time where they have to go out into the world. And they're going to see it the same way. They're going to be like, oh, man, it's messed up over there. I'm gonna go this way with the good people, and and that's how I see yeah. things shaping up. Yeah, man, it's about striking that balance, you know. And as we said, my kids are eight and five; they know there's a virus, or there was a virus, and that's about it. <laughs> um, and that's all they need to know at this time. Uh, you know, it's, but it's all it's all about striking that balance. Obviously, when people are shoving their kids into this sort of environment from the age of three, you know, and they're being then. Uh, exposed to all of that at three, four, five, six, then it be you know, it becomes a major problem. It's set and if their foundation is being set by whatever the public school says, you know, whatever the, the government by extension the government says, because they're exposed to that a lot. And that does have negative consequences. And like you said, most people's attitude today, and this because it's the attitude that shared by public school as well, is um punish harder. Oh, you're not punishing hard enough. <laughs> let's not let's not Let's take a moment and not think, should we try something else? No, no, no. You need to do what you're doing harder than you've done before. Because it doesn't work now, but it will if you do it even harder. <laughs> but uh, so we, we do. Point, we that's do, a good we point. Just, <laughs> we try to strike the balance. I wanted to laugh, man. Like, I did want to laugh, but I'm like, damn. Like, it, it, the truth kind of hurt there. It's like they doubled down on what made the problem in the first place. And, uh, you know, we do get to shield our kids from that sort of uh, exposure when they're very young. And, and then we're, the, the, the point is, as parents, we're in control of how much they get exposed to. Yes, we know kids need to be ready for the world, but they're not ready at three, four and five. You know, they're not ready at six, seven, eight. They're ready for some things, but they're not ready for the entire world, the weight of the world on their shoulder. They're not ready for people telling them that they need to be responsible for the health and safety of everyone else by getting a jet, uh, you know, by getting a vaccine, by wearing a mask, that they're endangering other people's lives by not doing those things. They're not ready for that. You know, but so it makes them tough. Exactly. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to end it by saying that, you know, we homeschool, but we're not, we're not, you know, building this massive dome over our house and making sure the kids never leave it. You know, they're exposed to all sorts of people, communities, you know, environments. It's just we've decided to take control of that rather than giving the control to someone else. And I think that's the best message that can be put out there is to take control, not just over your life, but over the life that your children are, not life, but the direction and the yeah. the obstacles placed in front of, the, the challenges they're going to have, the the path they're walking, who is going to be having influence on them. You know, pay attention to that and help shape that with your children. You know, th there's a fine line you walk of wanting what's best for your kids and allowing your kids to do what's best for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you have to just let them go. Like, like err on the side of just, they have to do this. It's their path to walk. But you can certainly offer greater resources, better friends, better better people you bring into the home, a better example yourself. You know, so you put them in an environment where they can thrive. You don't take a fresh sapling and plant it in the snow. You keep it inside until things thaw. And you know the weather is going to be warm. Then you bring it outside and let it go. So that's, that's sort of what we're doing with our kids. Like, it's a little crazy out there. So pay a little more attention to what they're reading, what they're watching. Make sure you're asking them questions. Hey. I'm always here if you want to ask anything. I tell my kids that like every other day. Hey, if you ever have a question, just let me know about anything. Don't care. And it's led to some super uncomfortable conversations that I did not enjoy. And I loved it. You know, like I, I it's great for them to have me on my toes, bouncing off the ropes because they're throwing question, question, question. I'm just like, all right, I got to navigate this. And there are things I don't know. I'm like, all right, we got to. And I tell them, you know what? I've never been asked that. And I've never looked it up. Let's go together. And I'll, I'll Google it right in front of them. Hey, did you know? Blah, 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 blah. My son's doing uh, Greek mythology. <laughs> Dude, I, I am like a horrible masculine male from, because I don't know the gods. I don't know like all who does what and who is who in the fall. I'm like, Zeus? Poseidon? <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I'm really running out here. <laughs> but I look it up and I'm learning with him and he's teaching me things. Hey, dad, I learned this in school. What do you... And I don't... No, oh, I don't care. Go play. No, t teach me. You're the teacher right now. I'll be the student. Go ahead, show me. And you can see him like, all right, cool. And he's very proud to tell me these things. And so it's just one of those things that's – I'd much rather conversations like that than, hey, I got to spank him harder because he spilt something outside. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, There's like two things going on here, and it's just interesting to me. But Alec, I put your Twitter handle on the screen right now. For those who can't read, it's at Fathers Reforged. <laughs> for, you, for you public you know, yeah. public school kids. If you, if you can't, like, braille – oh, my God. <laughs> for those who didn't get home to school and are peaceful, at Fathers Reforged. Alec, where else can people find you? What's the best way for them to communicate? Twitter is the best way to reach me. Um, right. I do have my uh, own YouTube channel uh, launching in February, the the Reforging. So check that out as well. But Twitter is the best way to reach me. Roger that. And we do have links below the show. It was a great time having you on. Is there anything we didn't cover? Any any final words you want to leave the masses with? No, man. It's always an honor to talk parenting with you guys. You know, and, and dad Twitter. And like we said, you know, you're the father. Take control of your home. You know, you can decide what's best. You can decide what's best. It's up to you. You set the tone. You set the mood. Lead your family. Lead your household. I'm not saying public school is the worst. And I'm not saying homeschool is the best. I'm just saying make sure you're leading. Because then, you know, everything else becomes a little less, you know, the external environment becomes a little less important because... It's the internal environment that matters most. I like how you said you weren't going to leave us with anything and then you dropped that. <laughs> oh, just off the top of my head, let me drop this life changing advice. <laughs> it's been a great one. Anthony. Yo. You got anything? Uh, you know, I got nothing, man. Nothing's left. Um, no, I always enjoy talking to you, Alec. It's, it, it really is great, man. It's, it's a good conversation. I think we did cover some parenting in, in that conversation, All right? There was a lot of other stuff, but, um, you know, it's always good to get perspectives uh, from other fathers, other men. And this is what, this, you know, it's what it's about. This is why we're doing this, right? It's to be a part of this community, <clears throat> excuse me, and to, <laughs> and to share, you know, share our lives with other men, with other fathers, what's working, what's not working, and to really become the best dads that we can. So, um, Thank you for your time, man, as always. 
That's a really good point. You know, this is the this is the exact type of conversation the three of us would have had if we were alone and just sitting at a cigar lounge or hanging out at, at cookout or whatever. You know, any situation. This is the type of things that we talk about. You know, and these are the type of discussions that should be normalized. And so if you're listening to this and you're digging it, and you're like, yeah, like I'm all about, you know, what you guys do in Oak and Rock. Obviously, make sure you like and subscribe. But more importantly, take that to your friends. <clears throat> Grab the dads, bring them together. Be like, hey, guys, you know, the kids are playing. The wives are together. Instead of sitting here like, hey, did you watch that soccer match in Wales or that football match in America? Like, hey, how's your kid doing in school? Hey, how are you and your wife doing? Like, you guys been having vacations coming up? Like, what are you guys' plans for the summer? You know, like. Just normal conversations about parenting, about family life, about doing things instead of consumer culture. Talk about what really matters. Talk about, hey, my, my kids been not been sleeping that well. What'd you guys do if your kids didn't sleep? You know, that normalize those discussions instead of hiding it as if your kid doesn't have any problems and you and your wife don't have any problems and you as a man have never experienced a problem. All you're allowed to talk about is beer, food, and football or sports or whatever. I'm saying football because it's playoffs, but like any sport or distraction. Like, who the fuck cares what Trump is saying or doing? Who who the fuck gives a shit about what is happening in these foreign lands so far from us? We're literally here in this moment at this cookout. Let's talk about something that matters. Like, our kids, our families, our friendship, our connection. You know, like, I don't understand it. And so, I'm, just before I kick off another episode and we go yeah, another hour, go, man. man. Let it, <laughs> like, let it rip. I, was trying to, I was trying to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. This has been another episode on Oak and Rock Fatherhood. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what we're saying, like I said, like, subscribe, share the good word, and uh, apply the information you learned here. You guys stay well. Alec, thank you for your time. Anthony, always a good one, man. You guys stay present, stay well. Another episode of Oak and Rock Fatherhood. We're out.